All right. Oh, he put us in some random skin. All right, so the first thing I want to do is get rid of the flare pistol. You might have noticed that, you know, in aisle two, you've got the hole here, and it took me a while to figure out what it was for, but yeah, it's a flare pistol. But it's in the way of a lot of things. So I want to get rid of that. So first you uh, bring up communications, ground crew, change cabin equipment, take away flare pistol. Copy. And it should just kind of vanish here shortly. Rearming complete. All right. So now you can see a lot better. Now, IL-2, uh, you know, you just hit E, especially in the uh, the measure smiths, because you don't have to do all the engine management stuff. Um, you can, some of the aircraft, you know, you might set, you know, quarter throttle, or you might ramp up your propeller pitch and your, your mixture to full rich. Like, I know, like, a, a, a the P-38 Lightning, if you don't kind of do this little routine, it doesn't set things and the engine will die. But basically, in IL-2, you just hit E, the engine goes and it goes through its startup procedure. You'll see the the switches flipping and the the buttons being pressed, but you're not doing anything as the pilot. You're just sitting there. In DCS, obviously, we have the fully clickable cockpit, and almost every button and switch and lever in here you see works. There's a few exceptions. Um, so we're going to go through a manual startup on the BF109 K4 here. So the first thing we do is you got to turn stuff on. So this is the generator switch up top, and if you hold the mouse over it, it should show you. And then this little red button turns it off. So you hit your circuit breaker. This one is the uh, the pitto tube and a windscreen heat switch. We probably don't need that, but we're gonna flip that on. Then we've got our navigational lights, interior UV light power switch, external ordnance and optional equipment, optional external equipment, this one down here at the bottom is probably the most important one that we need besides the generator. And that is the ignition, the MW50 system, the compass, the prop pitch, instruments and gun sight power switches. Then we come over here. This one's also very important. You need these top two. You need the generator, and this one is your battery. Now you'll see everything kicking on. Uh, these next two, this first one is your radio, and this next one is like... I think also part of the radio and your, your Bendix, well, it's not a Bendix in this, uh, but your directional finder. So I'm going to leave those off right now um, because when you turn on the radio, you know how it is. It's every AI in the area is chattering away like mad. And this one here is also important. This bottom one is your fuel pumps. You need that on. Okay. Now, this is your oxygen. We'll go ahead and get that flowing. This is our external fuel tank fuel flow indicator. All it is is a tube, and you'll see the fuel flow, I believe. Yeah, this has given us an external fuel tank. Um, but we also have, we have almost a full tank of fuel. Now, we've got all of our switches on, our instruments are up, our gun sights on. We are ready to start the engine. Now, normally, the pilot would have to actually pump this primer to get the fuel pressure up. It says our fuel pressure is not up. And I used to do this when I first got this mod, this aircraft, a few months ago. And I could never get it to actually charge up. And then I, I was reading that, oh, you don't have to actually do this. We do need to flip on our magnetos. Both magnetos are on. We're going to open up our safety cover for our starter pull switch. Oh, one other thing we need to do. We need to turn on our fuel mixture over here. This yellow lever here is an engine stop. When you land, you pull that up. Our radiators are set to automatic. And the pitch prop is also set to automatic, although the switch down here is it. So I don't think I have anything actually mapped to it. So we were going to put that back to auto. All right, so now we're ready to start having the ground crew spin up our inertial starter. Um, it's almost like a like an old Model T. They actually put a big crank in it, and they spin this thing up manually. It's a massive flywheel spring. So communications, ground crew, run the internal starter. Run the starter. You will hear Copy. it wind up as they, uh, they start spinning it. 
pro tip, you have to have your canopy open when you're issuing commands to the ground crew because they won't hear you if you close the canopy. So we're almost ready. They will say clear, and then you pull the handle until the engine starts. And we find out if I forgot to throw anything. Brakes. Clear. Uh, there it goes. Oops. What did I forget to turn on? All these are on. Oxygen, I got the fuel pump, I got the fuel pressure. I'll bump that open a little bit. All right, well, we'll have them do it again. On the starter. Copy. There we go. I think I just let go of it before. Now, these gauges here are your engine temperature and your oil temperature. So you'll want to let these get up in between these arrows before you start doing any significant flying. And you can actually throttle up a little bit to speed that process up. As you saw, this needle shot up. This is our fuel pressure. And over here is our oil pressure. They're now within their arrows, they are good. This is our tachometer. This is our atmosphere gauge, our, our manifold pressure essentially. Directional finder. This is our uh, climb and descent gauge, our compass. You can actually uh, set your uh, same thing with this. You can actually play around with that. You can reset your altimeter. Here's your uh, speedometer. This over here is our MW50, which we now want to flip on. That way that's ready to rock. This is the wing cannon switch, which we do not have wing cannons. Our MG131s uh, up in the uh, cowling. Flip those on. These are their ammo counters. You can actually set them yourself. And we've got down here, we've got the Mark 108 cannon. This is also the bomb switch. Now the bombs are active. Cannon's active. On the other side of the stick here is our bomb control, which we don't have any bombs. This side is diving, and this side is level bombing. Uh, MV is delay, and OV is no delay on the bomb fuses. What else do we have? This is uh, radiator control. We could put our cover back down over our... I'm going to go ahead and flip the cover for the landing gear. Landing gear buttons, landing gear lights. This is the canopy eject which we don't want to pull because it'll blow the canopy off. Um, I already went over these. Here's your flap wheel and your trim wheel. And then here underneath is our tail wheel is now locked. Tail wheel is unlocked. And uh, we are ready to go. How's our temperatures? Very good. All right. Close our canopy. And now we will take Looks like the runway is just right around behind us. I find that the ground handling in DCS is better than it is in IL-2. Um, it seems like you can turn a lot easier than you can in IL-2. I'm not real sure why. This is supposed to be the more accurate simulation, so... So we're on the runway. We're going to let it roll forward to make sure our tail wheel is straight, and now we're going to lock the tail wheel in place. Um, I'm going to bring in a little bit of flap. About 10 degrees or so. Which there's our line for 10 degrees of flaps since we got that drop tank on. And uh, 
I can call ATC and all that, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. And we are ready to go. I'm going to ramp up our atmosphere to about 1.35. Uh, the engine will let you max it out at 1.8. Uh, you'll blow yourself up, so you don't want to do that. got to be careful with it. Um, this is the K4, so it's the, the final version of the 109. And it's got, I believe, a 21 horsepower engine in this little lightweight airplane. So it's got tons of power on tap. All right, so a pro tip as well. You don't really use the rudders to steer. You just kind of tap your brakes to keep yourself straight, especially once you get the tail off the ground because you've got a lot of rudder authority um, and all that engine torque. It's really easy to let the airplane get away from you. All right, so here we go. Get this mouse out of the way a little bit. We're going to bring up our gear. We're going to throttle back to about 1 2. And we're going to bring up our flaps. This is the Normandy map with the World War II assets. I think the landscape looks better in this. Um, both games look great. Um, I think this one looks a little better. As you can see, I'm getting some, some chop. Uh, I think maybe currently the skies look a little better in IL-2. The clouds look a little better. But uh, they recently had upgrades on that. We can actually fold our gun sight out of the way. We've got a uh, Dora up here. I'm not sure how to turn off the labels. I gotta get stuff mapped still, and my lights are on. That's good. He's going the other way. There's the end of the runway. You want to drop your gear at about 250. So we're a little fast yet. We're slowing down. Bring in some flaps. This is a terrible pattern, I apologize. Some of it's that lag, that chop. It would be quite the pain to actually have to manually roll these wheels while flying an airplane. All right. Coming down on short final. And again, you want to be real careful with your rudder and brakes because that landing gear is really narrow. Oh, wow. I think I actually just did a full on three point. Huh. Bringing our flaps up. OK. 
Okay. And my tail wheel's still locked, so I'm rolling out nice and straight. And uh, we're just going to get off the, the active here. And then we'll shut it shut the engine down. And we're clear of the runway, so we're going to stop. And we are going to open up our canopy. Of course, there's many ways to shut down an airplane. And of course, this one gives us a nice little engine shut off, which I guess just cuts the fuel, probably. All right. And then uh, we just shut everything down. Now, this is a, uh, you see this a lot, but this is actually. Uh, kill switch for electronics so that just kills everything and then you can just shut off it looks like it actually popped a few of those out that's cool so that's how that works so it doesn't shut everything off but it shuts off your battery and your generator and your fuel pumps so that's like your emergency kill switch kind of like on a motorcycle you hit that and you're not getting fuel and ignition turn off our oxygen oh and I also forgot to mention the radio systems all right here and you have to actually set all these frequencies and channels to get your directional finder to work and to communicate with other flight groups and your wingmen and stuff like that. It's all pretty neat. So anyways, that is the BF-109K4 in DCS world. Also notice there's the pilot in the external view and in the internal view he's not here, but you can turn him on with right shift P. Right shift P. There he is. Right shift P. So now you've got a pilot figure for when you look down, which is kind of neat. But as you can see, his arm kind of gets in the way of certain things when you're trying to flip buttons and pull levers, like your radio, for example. It's kind of hard to get to the radio down there. So most people leave him off. So this is IL-2 Sturmovic Great Battles. The, it's BF-109 K4. So the cockpit, you know, basically looks the same. It's not interactive, of course. I don't have a mouse to use things move of course you know but i can't actually interact with anything but it, it's all the same there's all your fuses your radio and all that stuff so this time i have a <laughs> theater appropriate skin all right so in il2 you know the measurements have their auto control but yeah now i know that you know you're supposed to turn on that little fuel line fuel flow there and, and everything. But in this, yeah, you just hit E and you watch it go through its its buttons. See there it set it, set the throttle a little bit. It flipped the switches over here. Magnetos are on. There he's pumping the uh, primer. And now we've got its inertial starter going. We're going to hold the brakes. The tailwheel is currently locked. That. There we go. Then it finishes up. Turns on our cannons, our radios, our gun sight. All right. We are good to go, so we will close up our canopy. We do not have a drop tank. Drop tanks are coming in Battle of Normandy. It'll be interesting to see how that's implemented in the game. Because like the, the 109s could definitely use them on some of the longer missions and things like that. A lot of the uh, Western aircraft don't really need them. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how big that map is and all that. All right, so gauges are all the same. You've got your temperature gauges, your, your pressure, oil, uh, fuel and oil pressure, your tack your atmosphere, your fuel tanks down there, directional finder, vertical speed indicator, your artificial horizon, bomb controls, radar, all the same stuff. There we 
go. And I'm going to instantly spin out. Actually, that's about perfect. <laughs> Just so it's similar, even though I don't really need them. I'm going to bring in 10 degrees of flaps. I do want to roll forward a little bit. See, see what I was saying about the ground handling? I didn't touch anything, and yet it wants to roll. All right. But uh, we need to lock our tail wheel. Was it this button? There we go. All right. So again, I'm going to come up to uh, 1.35. And uh, I'm just spinning. There we go. Nearly full right rudder. Whereas in DCS, I really didn't need any rudder. Just a little bit of right. Whoa. My gamma's really dark. I need to. I've been playing around in VR, but I was having trouble with my VR, so my gamma's really dark, which is why this cockpit looks very dark. So, again, this is the Rhineland map in summer. So, not quite the same area of Europe, but, uh, you know. Oh, I should have done a uh, little more commentary on the audio. I think DCS has a little bit better audio. I think the engines sound louder and more into it. The guns definitely sound. That's okay. The, uh, the guns are pretty thunderous in DCS. It might not necessarily be the most accurate, but uh, I think it sounds a little better. But overall, both games are very good. They're well worth your money, kind of depending on what you want. If you want to do all World War II stuff, IL-2 is the way to go. It's got more missions, more campaigns, more planes, more maps. It's all World War II. Whereas, of course, DCS, you've got some World War II stuff. you got a few, you got, I don't know, half a dozen Warbirds and two maps, I think. Uh, where's my airbase? I got totally lost. Oh, I'm right here. I'm out. I'm way too close. Um, but, of course, DCS is known for Cold War and modern-day jets and helicopters. And it does that stuff very well. will help me bleed off some of the, my extra speed here as I get aligned with the field. Alright, well we're going to have to go around and do this again. Alright. I'm really fast. There, I'm slowing down pretty good. In DCS, you do have to be careful. If you drop your gear and you're going too fast or your flaps, you'll tear things up. I, IL-2 doesn't seem to really care as much on that. Alright, and you 
just... There we go. And of course, you know, here you can't hit the big kill switch or shut anything off, so you just hit E again. Some of the aircraft, if you're running your mixture, you know, you can pull your mixture back yourself and it'll uh, it'll die that way. So have a little more input. And of course IL-2 doesn't have a pilot model, which to be honest is fine. Like I said, it gets in the way of the uh, instruments controls you need to get to. I forgot to mention that in DCS, there there is a keyboard shortcut to just have it automatically power up the engine and shut it all down. So you don't have to always do the full startup. But of course, on online servers, it's going to be enforced that you do all that. I think also in DCS, you can, you can turn off the control stick or yoke, depending on the aircraft. That way you can, you know, it's not in your way either. But yeah, so that's just a quick comparison between... IL-2 Stormovich, Great Battles, VF-109 K-4, and the K-4 in DCS. Separate video. I might do a little bit more comparison of the two games directly, you know, really kind of get into comparing graphics options and performance and all the different planes and the skins and how easy mission builders are to use and stuff like that. We'll see. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.